This is the Faces of Easter, Part 5, from the Complete Works of Godly Play by Jerome Berryman. It is published by the Church Publishing Company, and it is under copyright to the Godly Play Foundation. Welcome to the fifth week of Lent. We're so glad you're here in Godly Play. It's a wonderful time for us, a time for us to talk to God, to hear God's stories. But in order to do that, we have to be ready. So let's take a deep breath and blow out one more. And blow out. And now we're ready. One of the other, one of the ways we can get ready is to sing our song. You know this song. I'll say it and you'll sing it with us. God, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Jesus, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Spirit, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Another way that we can get ready is to light the Christ candle. Once there was a man who said such amazing things and did such incredible things that people began to follow him, but they didn't know who he was. And so one day they just decided to ask him and they said, who are you? And he said, I am the light. In the beginning, the baby was born. God chose Mary to be the mother of God. Stop. Listen carefully to these words. God chose Mary to be the mother of God, and the word was born, a wordless child. When the baby looked at Mother Mary, he could already see the cross in her face. And when he looked at Father Joseph, he saw the cross there too. Mother Mary and Father Joseph held the baby close. They kept him warm. They gave him everything he needed to grow, and he began to grow. And the baby grew into a boy. And when he was about 12 years old, he went with Mother Mary and Father Joseph and people from their village of Nazareth to Jerusalem to celebrate one of the high holy feasts. And after the celebration the next day, they began the long journey home. They went out through the great high gate and began to walk. But soon, Mary and J J Joseph couldn't find Jesus. They looked everywhere for him. They thought that he was with the other children with, from Nazareth who he was playing with, but they couldn't find him. So they turned and they hurried back to Jerusalem. They went down the long and winding streets. They went back to the marketplace where they bought their food. They went back to the place where they spent their night, the night, but there was no sign of him. And so finally they went to the temple and there was Jesus. He was with the rabbi and the priests. And when Jesus spoke, they listened because he knew so much. And when they spoke, Jesus listened because he wanted to learn more. Mary and Joseph asked Jesus the question that parents often ask their children, for which there really is no answer. Why did you do this? And Jesus said, did you not know I would be in my father's house? That was a little odd. Mary and Joseph didn't understand. Their house was next to Joseph's carpentry shop in Nazareth. 
They didn't understand, but they didn't forget. The boy grew into a man, and when Jesus was about 30 years old, he went down to the Jordan River where his cousin John was baptizing people. See, here's the back of John's head. Look at his crazy hair. He was a wild man. Jesus walked into the water and walked right up to John and said to him, baptize me. And John looked at him as though he were seeing him for the very first time, and he said, I can't baptize you. You are the Messiah. You are the one we have been waiting for. Baptize me. And Jesus said, no. It is written that you will go before me to prepare the way, so you should baptize me. And Jesus went down into the dark and chaotic waters. And when John pulled him back up again, there were people who said that a, go a dove came down from heaven and came very close to Jesus. And there were other people who said they heard a voice from heaven say, this is my beloved son, and I am well pleased with him. Jesus continued across the river Jordan and into the wilderness to decide what work he was to do. Jesus was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. There was not much food to eat or water to drink. And one day he heard a voice, and the voice said, See those stones over there? Why don't you take one of them? And why don't you turn it into bread so you have something to eat? And Jesus said, No. To be a real human being, we need more than just bread to eat. And then... All of a sudden, Jesus felt as though he was at the top of the temple in Jerusalem. And the voice said to him, why don't you jump? Why don't you see if the angels come to catch you before you hit the stones? And Jesus said, no, we don't need to tempt God. And then it was as though Jesus could see all the kingdoms in all the world. And the voice said, follow me and I will make you king of all of this. And Jesus said, no, I am to be a king, but not that kind of king. And then the voice went away. And Jesus left the wilderness and crossed the Jordan River and went to do the work he was supposed to do. was the work Jesus was supposed to do. His work was to come close to people, especially people that no one else wanted to be close to. Look, here he is. He's with the blind man. He's so close that he can touch the blind man's eyes. When Jesus came close to people, they could do things they couldn't do before. They could see things they couldn't see. They could understand things they couldn't understand. When Jesus came close, people changed. And so Jesus also told parables. And one day he realized that he was to become a parable. And so he turned and headed for Jerusalem for the last. And now I wonder, is there 
anything that you might have that might be able to help us tell this story. Miss Sarah is here, and she has some things for me. Oh, look, she has chosen blind Bartimaeus. He was one of the people that Jesus helped. And a road. Maybe the road to, to Jerusalem. And a parable. Because Jesus was to be a parable. So, is there anything at your house that you might have from your godly playthings or from anything in your house that you might to bring, you'd like to like to bring to add to this story so we can help tell it better. Go ahead, look. I'll be here when you get back. You can pause the video too if you like, but I'll be here when you get back. Oh good, you're back. Thanks for help telling it, for helping tell this story. And now I wonder, I wonder what you think is the best part of the story. I wonder where you might see yourself in this story. And I wonder what you think is the most important part. Now I'm going to change the light. Right now the light is just in one place, just right here, but I'm going to change it. You see I've changed the light and it's going out and it's going out to fill the world and to, to fill this room and then to fill the world. Soon the light will be everywhere. Thank you. I'm so glad you came today. You each brought your own special gifts to share. Hold this story in your heart this week and keep wondering. May God bless you and keep you.